I do not use a debugger. I don't use the debugger either. Okay, so I'm kind of excited about this article. I learned to program with BASIC. I learned with QBASIC back when I was 12. I would write elaborate programs and run them. Invariably, invariably, uh, they would surprise me by... Invariably, is that the right word at this point? Invariably, isn't it inevitably? Uh, they would surprise me by failing to do what I expect. I would struggle for a time, but I'd eventually give up and just accept that whatever bugs I had created were there to stay. It would take me a decade to learn how to produce reliable and useful software. To this day, I still get angry with people who take it for granted that software should do what they expect without fail. I can be on this team. I can definitely be on that team because you know what? It, it is kind of like software is really hard. And to just assume that it's always going to be fantastic. Yeah, come on. It's very hard to get right. Uh, in any case, I eventually graduated to something better, Turbo Pascal. Turbo Pascal was a great programming language coupled with fantastic programming environment that is comparable in many ways to modern integrated development environments, IDEs. Yet it is three decades old. It had something impressive. You could use a debugger. What this means is that you could run through a program line by line watching what happened to variables. You could set breakpoints where the program would halt and give you control. Recently, Chris Wellen wrote about Borland C++, an environment from the 90s. I made a couple of test projects built and ran them with different options and poked around with the debugger. The debugger is actually pretty decent, especially for the 1990s. Okay, okay. At this time, I thought that programming with a debugger was the future. All right, all right. Decades later, I program in various languages, C, JavaScript, Go, Java, C++, Python, and I almost never use a debugger. I use fancy tools, sanitizer, static anal uh, analyzers, uh, continuous integration, Git flow, synergy, teamwork, uh, and I certainly do use tools that are called debuggers, like GDB, but I almost never step through my programs line by line watching variable value values. I almost never set breakpoints. I, I say almost because there are cases where a debugger is the right tool, mostly on simple or quick and dirty projects, in the context where my brain is overwhelmed because I do not fully master the language or the code. This being said, I do not recall the last time I used a debugger as a debugger to step through code. I have a vague recollection of doing so to debug a dirty piece of JavaScript. Yeah, I can say I don't remember the last time I debugged. I, deb I probably debug I probably debug about once a month. I'm probably a once a month debugger user. I'd say that that is pretty fair. I'm not alone. In five minutes, I was able to find several famous programmers who took positions against debuggers or repo reported barely using them. Linus, Robert, Uncle Bob... John Graham Cunningham, or Cunning, hates debuggers. Brian Kerrigan and Rob Pike, let's go, the author, the author of Python. Guido Van Brosev uh, has been quoting saying that he uses print statements for 90% of his debugging. Love it all. Look at that. This is good. I should make it clear that I do not think that there is one objective truth regarding tools. It is true that our tools shape us, but there is a complex set of interactions between how you work, what you do, who you work with, what other tools you are using, and so forth. Whatever works for you might be best. I, you know, I'm always, I always have this huge hesitation right here. Whenever I hear this phrase, whatever works for you might be best. If that was the case, I'm going to be real here. I would still be on NetBeans, and I would not have learned Vim. Because you know what? Changing IDEs was a huge slowdown. Changing from what I was used to text editing into using Vim was a huge slowdown, right? There was plenty of things that did not work best for me, but I've heard that it could become better to use if I give it time. And so there are, you know, I, I, I don't want you to get stuck on this line. Always explore to make sure you're doing things the best. And once you have comprehensive knowledge on the thing, then pick the thing that works best for you, okay? I just want to be clear about that. However, the fact that Linus, uh, who is in charge of a critical piece of our infrastructure, made a 15 million lines of code, the Linux kernel, does not use a debugger, tells us something about debuggers. Anyhow, so why did I stop using debuggers? Uh, debuggers were conceived in an era where we worked on moderately small projects with simple processors, and no thread, no out-of-order execution, simple compilers, relatively small problems, and no formal testing. I feel like John Carmack has like the exact opposite to say about debuggers. I, I think with game programming and really good debuggers, there's probably things here that are completely missing in this, in this statement, but I think this is probably also the environment that you work in. I think web is much less useful 
with debuggers than say something like that. So I could be on I could be on both teams here. For what I do, I feel that debuggers do not scale. Okay, okay. Uh, there is only so much time in life. You either write code or you do something else, like running line by line through the code. Doing something else means, one, rethinking your code so that it is easier to maintain or less buggy. Two, adding smarter tests so that in the future, bugs are readily identified effortlessly. Investing your time in this manner makes your code better in a lasting manner, whereas debugging your code line by line fixes one tiny problem without improving your process or your future diagnostics. The larger and more complex the project gets, the less useful the debugger gets. Okay, okay. Interesting hypothesis. Interesting hypothesis. I don't necessarily agree with this hypothesis, but it's still interesting. I like anyone that comes up with like a rule, right? I, I love the idea of trying to apply rules to life, right? And so what he's trying to say is that, you know, there's a scaling factor. Uh, I disagree with this statement, but interesting. Will your debugger scale to hundreds of processes and uh, terabytes of data with trillions of closely related instructions? Okay, that's, I mean, that none of this is real. I work on probably one of the larger projects that anybody probably works with in general, which I have millions of records. No one gets into the trillions, okay? No, no one's in the trillions here. My ultimate goal when I worked on a difficult project is that when problems arise, they are, uh, as they always do, it should require almost no effort to pinpoint and fix the problem. Relying on a debugger as your first line of defense can be a bad investment. You should always try to improve, your, let's see, always improve your code first. Okay. I like what he's saying. So one of the big things I've been kind of really trying to put into practice is preemptive debugging logging that I turn on when there's a problem. And what I mean by that is that there's a lot of things you can debug, but there's only so many useful things you should debug. Do you know what I mean? And so when a problem happens, I can run it once with debugging, guess where the guess where effectively the problem is and go, okay, this is the problem. I can fix this right away. The problem with this statement is that how do you fix all the bugs that show up? Some people don't know how to fix problems without debugging. I've always been kind of a, a, a logger kind of person. You know what I mean? You can't uh, log every variable, every uh, call stack, every frame. Exactly. You can't do that every time. There's times where it's like conditionally, it's like a, it only happens under certain conditions. And so you should know these things. You know what I mean? Rob Pike, one of the authors of the Go language, once came to a similar conclusion. If you dive into the bug, you tend to fix the local issue in the code. But if you really think about the bug first, how the bug came to be, you often find and correct a higher level problem in the code that will improve the design and prevent further bugs. Again, I wonder if this is all, I mean, sometimes I have a hard time believing this because sometimes my bugs are just because I'm like, I, you know, I'm just, I'm a grug brain, right? I'm just like, me thought cases three turns out cases four. You know, I, I, I'm just stupid, right? Like I, I just did, I just didn't get it correct at all. Um, I don't want to be misunderstood. However, we need to use tools better, better tools, so that we can program ever uh, more sophisticated software. Ever running through the code line by line, checking the values of your variables is no way to scale up in complexity, and it encounters the wrong kind of designs. This is, I mean, it's a really, it's a, it feels like a hot take. Do you guys feel like this is a pretty hot take? Because I like. I'm in total agreement that I don't think debuggers are a great first line of defense. But I, I, I don't feel like he's making a great argument for this. You should get Casey to talk about this. I, I love Casey. I would get Casey to talk about this. We'll get Casey to talk about that. How does that sound? Here, we're going to go like this. Twitter. Because Casey's been whispering me. Okay, Casey. And we've been trying to find a co-react. I got something for us to react to. Want to join? Question mark. We'll post this on Twitter. We'll send it now. I like Casey a whole bunch. Everybody, you know what to do. You know what to do, okay? Do the things you got to do, okay? Um, but yeah, he wants to come on and talk about uh, stuff. I want him to come on and talk about stuff. I feel like this could be a really fun experience. Um, let me end with this quote that sums up my uh, sentiment. Debuggers don't remove bugs. They only show them in slow motion. Correct. Further reading, Ben Dean, uh, an experienced game developer who worked on GoldenEye. Let's go, favorite game. Come on, tell me GoldenEye has not done so much for you. GoldenEye, greatest game, potentially. Medal of Honor, StarCraft, let's go. Diablo, what? World of Warcraft, wow, he's played, he's did, uh, these are a lot of games that I loved, 
wrote in 2018, the principal problem with debugging is that it doesn't scale. In order to catch bugs, we often need a, uh, to be able to run with sufficiently large and representative data sets. When we're at this point, the debugger is usually a crude tool to use. I, using a debugger doesn't scale. Types and tools and tests do. Okay, so this actually is a good... Okay, so I think I understand more what he's trying to say here. This makes a lot more sense. And what I mean by this is that I had this problem where I was having a bit of a memory issue because I was categorizing every single piece of memory created in, in a JavaScript engine into what source file was creating them, where, so that way we could actually say whose functions were the worst offenders versus the, you know, not the worst offenders for identifying memory problems or memory growth. It was ultimately a failed tool, but nonetheless, I had a problem. The problem here is that when you run any JavaScript program, that's especially using React, you're creating a million pieces of memory like every five seconds. So to be able to go through that and really find a set of problems with a debugger turned out to be super, super hard. Whereas really good logging followed just by awking and setting was actually a way, way easier way to do to find the problems than anything else. I don't know. Personal opinion, once it reaches a certain scale, I find it hard to use tools sometimes. Sometimes. Not always. Sometimes. Because I didn't know the conditions in which the thing was going to break. So that's part of the problem, which is like when you don't know the conditions in which a program is going to break, you can't set a conditional breakpoint. And this function is going to be called 900 times. Zizo, hey, bro, I just want to hear my name on a video. Hey, hey, bro, come on, g g g g g give my name out. Okay, Zizo, now shut up and give me a sub for that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you're now immortalized, Zizo. I hope you like that. Okay, you're going to be in a video. I hope you enjoyed appearing in a video that way. Hey, Mastermind, how you doing? Remember when I used to call you Master Mindio? Hope you're doing well. How's the kiddos? Uh, but real talk, um, does profiling count as a debugger? No, because profiling is inherently not a debugger action, right? You do a bunch of stuff, and then you look at the output. Uh, it's different. Anyways, um, he could be in a short. Marker, uh, say my name as a short. Go back about 30 seconds. We'll try. We'll try it out. All right, well... That's all I really have to say about this is that I do think that there are better ways to debug certain sets of problems that don't involve debugging, or at least not right away. Now, when I found the memory issue in which there was a point in which I could see the bad thing happening, then I put a debugger in, a, de a, 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 a what's it called, a conditional breakpoint that made sense. And then at that point, I already narrowed down the problem and I was able to see the problem. And then I could see how I could fix it because I could investigate in the whole stack. So was there a good reason to... To use a debugger, for me, there was a good reason, but I couldn't even find the bug with a debugger until I got to the problem. You know what I mean? It was like, it took a while, right? Because the problem and the bug were in two different places. You know what I mean? Uh, it was tricky. This is also pre-recorded, if you're wondering. This is obviously a pre-recording right here. AI-generated pre-recording live action. The name is, I also don't use debuggers, but I don't necessarily agree with this article, okay? Uh, Daniel, I, I don't, but I appreciate the article. Again. 